Hello guys, welcome to the last video of Ventilator Series. I hope you have covered rest of the parts of this series. In this video, we will look into external attachment of ventilators, like filters, circuits and humidifiers. Let's know about medical ventilator patient circuit filters. The filters of a mechanical ventilator play several important roles. On one hand, they protect the patient from any sort of airborne filth which might be blowing around in the gas supply systems or the ambient air. On the other hand, these filters protect the delicate innards of the ventilator from the corrosive swamp gas being exhaled by the patient. Lastly, the filters protect the intensivist and their co-workers from exhaled pathogens and clouds of nebulized medications which did not make it into the patient. Let's know about bacteria filters first. Bacterial filters, apparatus of various construction for cleansing fluids of bacteria and other microorganisms by means of filtration. The fluid passes through a porous surface as a result of pressure exerted on the fluid being filtered. Expired particles from an intubated patient are usually 0.3 to 1.0 micrometers in diameter and there may be up to 2,500 particles per breath. Next type of filters are HME filters, known as heat and moisture exchangers. When the upper airways are bypassed and gas with inadequate humidity is delivered directly to the trachea, damage can occur to the lining of the trachea. In particular, inadequate humidity can cause dysfunction of the mucociliary elevator which compromises respiratory cilia lining the trachea and functions by moving fluid and mucus towards the larynx. The humidification requirements for patients whose upper airways are bypassed vary depending on whether the bypass occurs during anesthesia or intensive care, as dysfunction of the mucociliary elevator depends on duration of exposure to inadequate humidity. There is one more type of filter, is HEPA filters used in ventilation. Filtration of breathing gases has been designed to eliminate any potential source of nosocomial infections and minimize the incidental exposures of caregivers to any aerolicized medications. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has clearly established standards to classify a filter as a high-efficiency particulate aerosol. HEPA device. While a variety of HEPA grade filters are available, single layer media and electrostatic filters are those commonly used in breathing circuits and heat and moisture exchange filters, HMEFs. These filters may not provide the efficiency offered by HEPA grade devices. However, it is important to note that both the filter media and the procedures used to test HEPA filters are different than those used to test other filters such as electrostatic filters. Therefore, manufacturers' claims of 99.9% .9 efficiency with regard to bacteria and viruses must be evaluated according to the test mythology. Let's look into ventilator humidifiers. Humidification of inhaled gas has been standard of care in mechanical ventilation for a long period of time. More than a century ago, a variety of reports described important airway damage by applying dry gases during artificial ventilation. Consequently, respiratory care providers have been utilizing external humidifiers to compensate for the lack of natural humidification mechanisms when the upper airway is bypassed. Particularly, active and passive humidification devices have rapidly evolved. Sophisticated systems composed of reservoirs, wires, heating devices and other elements have become part of our usual armamentarium in the intensive care unit. Therefore, basic knowledge of the mechanisms of action of each of these devices, as well as their advantages and disadvantages, becomes a necessity for the respiratory care and intensive care practitioner. 
methods of airway humidification during invasive mechanical ventilation of adult patients. Let's move on towards ventilator patient circuit. There are numerous permutations of ventilator circuits. And of course, ICU trainees are not expected to become familiar with all of them. The vast majority of the variants are relevant more to the anesthetic environment, as their design is characterized by various attempts to conserve anesthetic gas while discarding expired CO2. The breathing circuits used in intensive care are usually much more straightforward. The single limb breathing circuit tube within a tube configuration compromises two tubes of sufficient size and compliance, so that either channel enables safe, unrestricted inspiration, expiration at all times in spontaneous and controlled ventilation. Dual limb circuit are used with conventional ICU ventilator. In dual limb circuit, one tubing carries gases towards the patient and another tubing carries the exhaled gases towards the exhalations port of the ventilator. As we come towards end of the ventilator series, I request you comment down below for the suggestions and inputs for the environment of the videos. I hope you loved watching this series. Please subscribe the channel and thanks for watching Biomedical Engineers TV.